Hi guys and welcome to your daily tarot reading for Saturday the 29th of May 2021. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to use my deck, the Gregory Scott Tarot. Let's see what the cards have to say about Saturday and what energy is coming up for you. So when I shuffle the cards, I just kind of tune in and ask the cards, what is the day going to be like? What do we need to be aware of? And give us the heads up of the day's energy, please. So let's see what the cards have to say in response to that. And what is coming up? First, we've got the Seven of Swords. Okay. The Queen of Wands. And the Emperor. Okay, the Queen of Wands, whenever I use this deck and see her, it just cracks me up because <laughs> it was the most difficult card to make for some reason. The artist just couldn't get to grips with the concept of a woman kind of presenting her artwork at a gallery opening and enjoying a round of applause and taking a bow and having a smile on her face and being happy and grateful that she's in the spotlight, in the limelight, that people are celebrating her and that she was kind of expressing her gratitude. He just, he just couldn't or wouldn't do that. He, first of all, he painted her like she had been, oh my God, she just had the roughest life ever. She looked so worn out and beaten down. <laughs> and the Queen of Wands isn't about that. She's a woman who's living her life purpose. It's the Queen of Wands, right? So she's happy and she's strong and she's confident and she's creative and she's expressing herself. So she's someone who kind of lives the good life. So to paint her as like this little waif-like unhappy figure didn't work. And then the other thing, just getting this tiny little smile on her face took weeks. He made her look so miserable. It was, it was mind boggling. It was a really weird experience to be honest, but I'm still happy to have this deck. I think it's great. And I'm also glad that um, I did keep just complaining and saying, listen, it's the queen of wands. She needs to have a smile on her face. Okay. Just put the smile on her face. <laughs> they really, yeah, they didn't love me at the end, but the outcome is really what's important to me. So there we go. All right. So the Seven of Swords, you can see this guy, very cloak and dagger, uh, stealing a diamond here. And the Seven of, of Swords is about being really self-interested. And whether you're actually stealing diamonds or you're stealing other people's time or you're just super self-interested and you're not being particularly empathetic to other people's needs and desires, it's really talking about this fundamental theme of self-interest and being short-sighted in the sense that the world revolves around you and you feel that there's a lack. So the self-interest stems from the fact that you feel you don't have enough, which is interesting here because look at the beautiful clothes he's wearing. This guy is like a professional thief and that looks like leather. And if you've ever, I don't know, like went, gone shopping for any item of clothing that's made of leather, that's expensive. So he has a lot already. So he's invested all this money into being a professional thief. He could have, I don't know, bought himself a car or a house or whatever, instead of putting this stuff on his back. Anyway, by thinking that you're lacking in some way, obviously you're going to compare yourself to other people and you're going to start judging yourself and you're going to look at yourself and say, oh, what is wrong with me? Why don't I have as much as other people? And it sometimes, unfortunately, gives certain people the sense that because I am hard done by and I don't have as much as other people, I'm entitled to and it's okay for me to take from other people or places or things because I deserve just as much. And that's true. We all deserve good things in life and we all deserve to be happy. But it doesn't mean that you're entitled to take that happiness from others so that you can have it for yourself. What's much more likely is that the value in abundance resides within you already and you can create wonderful things for yourself. It's just a little bit harder in terms of the amount of effort you have to make. So here, instead of breaking into the local jewelry shop and stealing the diamond, you may have to fly to Botswana and open your own diamond mine. A lot more work, right? A lot more effort, but it's doable. So the Seven of Swords is a card that says you've got the wrong 
end of the stick here. You're looking at things incorrectly because you're thinking you're poor and broke, whether financially or spiritually or physically or emotionally, whatever. And you feel justified in then being mean or taking from other people because you feel like you're less than. This always comes back to bite you in the behind. He always gets busted by the police, okay? He always gets arrested. The diamond is returned to the jewelry shop and all the fancy clothes are, you know, hung up and he has to sit in prison. So don't operate on this level. It's just gonna make you miserable. What goes around comes around. What you put out, you get back. So instead of this, focus on the queen of wands and be happy, just like her, with her glorious smile on her face. And look at the wealth you have within. She is painting. She's made all these pictures that she's exhibiting here. Her little cat is there as a familiar, inspiring her, protecting her, keeping her company. So it's the process of creativity that is really enjoyable and the outcome is enjoyable. So she likes actually putting... Um, getting the paintbrush and dipping it into the paint and then putting the brush to paper. That's fun for her. So the creative process is amazing. But then the, the result of hanging them up and having people pay an entrance fee and then clapping and saying, aren't you a wonderful artist? She enjoys that too. And that's the opposite of this. He doesn't have anything and he feels entitled to steal. She may not have anything either, but she realizes that she has a lot. I mean, in terms of love or finance or security or whatever but she realizes that she has something which is a major talent that she can enjoy and use and by using this major talent she can create love by the public here as you can see and security each one has paid i don't know a few pounds to get in she can create all these things that she may feel are lacking by simply going within and using her skills and talents and presenting them to the world. It reminds me of a um, thing I read the other day by Eckhart Tolle. He wrote that, um, and I'm sorry if I'm, if I'm messing this up, but basically there's um, uh, someone begging by the side of the road and he's sitting on a box and someone comes along and the guy begging says, hey, do you have any spare change? And the guy um, passing says, uh, no, I don't, but why don't you have a look in the box? And the beggar says, uh, well, why? I've been sitting on this thing for ages. Why should I look in there? He's like, just, you know, try it. Look in the box. So the he actually does. He opens the box and it's full of gold. And he's just thrilled and stunned. And he's like, oh, I've been sitting on this this treasure the whole time. And the story, I mean, even though I just, I think it's, just look it up. Um. Eckhart Tolle, beggar sitting on a box. It's told much more eloquently than I just told it. But basically, it's, you don't need to look outside of yourself. If you look within, you realize you have everything you're ever going to need. And I know that sounds kind of easy, easily said in theory, but in my experience of life, it really is the truth. And it takes a lot to kind of look within ourselves because I don't know about you, but with me, I get blinded by all the things that I don't like. It's like, and then it's like, oh, I don't want to see any more. Thank you very much. I'd rather like go to the jewelry shop and, well, not steal, but look at the shiny objects to distract me from this thing that I am because I don't want to look at it. But as I've got older, I've realized that you have to look and you have to make the best of things if you want to be somewhat satisfied in life because the true treasures do sit within. And when you start to work with those and practice your skills and talents that when you that's when you can really create abundance and wealth for yourself and that's when you can make friends with yourself it kind of serves as evidence as in i am proud of my achievements and i like myself a little bit more you know some people are born and they just love themselves unconditionally from the get-go and it's all wonderful and brilliant some of us aren't like that some of us haven't been born like that and it's a process of learning to love ourselves and we do have to learn it because you are going to be there till the very end and you might as well make friends with yourself if you want a much easier ride. If you don't like yourself, a lot of people think that's kind of like an insurance policy. It really isn't. If you don't like yourself, you manifest a lot of negativity in your life. So do yourself a favor and just love yourself warts and all and try and love the things that you really don't like and keep at it until you love them. And you'll be surprised that when you really try and change your perspective on things, particularly yourself, you can change 
your perspective in earnest. It's like positive affirmations. You look in the mirror and you're like, I love you so much. Thank you for taking such good care of me. And the first time you do it, it's like, oh, you're, you're right. And then after a while, it actually rings true. And it's like, hey, do you know what? I just realized I have been taking care of myself for years and years and years. So there's some truth to this. So try it out. It's really the best thing that you'll ever do. It's the best investment that you'll ever make in yourself. And actually, it's making me a little bit emotional to think about this card now because the Queen of Wands is really the epitome of that principle. And the fact that he drew her as miserable and unhappy kind of demonstrates that process that you may not see the amazing thing in her. It's up to her to realize the good stuff and to get creative and to let herself thrive and open up. And then she can smile and take a bow in front of people and be recognized for all this amazingness that she's got. So it's a gradual process, okay? We're not all born as like supermodels and gorgeous and successful and loving ourselves and spiritual and strong and intelligent and meh, meh, meh. It's something we need to work on and we can work on. And I really, I'm sorry to go on and on, but I really respect people who aren't born with everything. I, if you guys follow me on Instagram or anywhere, you guys know that I was a big fan of Joan Rivers, the comedian, and she hated her body. And people made fun of her for plastic surgery and stuff, but she kept going and she, despite the fact that she hated her body, decided to make herself look as pretty and gorgeous as um, she, she could. And I thought she was really pretty. She just didn't. But she didn't let that stop her. She kept trying. She kept putting herself out there. And I thought she was one of the most beautiful people ever, not just because of her appearance, but because of her personality and her ability to make me laugh. And I respect that. I respect people continuing despite obstacles, not just being born with like, you know, like flawless beauty and then saying, aren't I gorgeous? I'm, it's much easier, but it's not as, as inspiring to other people watching. Anyway, we've got the emperor here, butch Scottish guy looking at the um, plans of some cathedral here. And he's an engineer. He's a builder. The emperor is the father figure in the tarot, and he's about security and structure. So by not comparing yourself and trying to take from others and realizing that you have all this beauty and joy and creativity within you and creating a wonderful relationship with you, you're going to be able to feel some internal structure and you'll be able to decompress and relax and say, hey, do you know what? I am my own best friend. I've got this emperor living inside of me. He's strong. He's reliable. I can rely on myself and I'm okay. I don't have to try and get and run around and frantically trying to acquire and get things. I am okay. All I need to do is look at the blueprints within, the blueprints of my soul, and I'll realize that there's some really fabulous good stuff there. And that's my security in life. That's what I can rely on. And those blueprints, those plans are really, really strong and resilient. They're going to be there for life. And I can draw on that resource for as long as I'm on this planet. So I've got nothing to worry about. Sounds simple in theory, right? <laughs> Try it out. It really, I, I really think this is very important. So the relationship with yourself is something that you can really turn around and improve. And you can see the beauty in yourself, whereas before it just looked sad and miserable. Okay, the queen counts as one. One and seven is eight. Eight and four is 12. And 12, one and two is three. Three is about communication and new beginnings. So if you have a positive word with yourself and you discover the treasures within, you're able to make a fresh start. You're able to make new plans. And first and foremost, you're able to relax. So the new plans aren't this ongoing sense of urgency, like I need to steal something to get rich. It's, first of all, let me take a moment to realize that I have this multitude, this wealth sitting inside of me. Oh, let's relax. And that relaxation then, and that sense of security allows you to make plans which are much calmer and consistent and structured in nature because you're not going at them from, oh, I need to seize this opportunity now and jump on it before it fle it's fleeting and it jumps away and I lose it. It's, I have this today and I'm going to have it next month and I'm going to have it next year. 
So calmly, I'm going to look at this and do something about it. So there's no urgency. So ask yourself, what are the things that excite you that don't feel urgent, that just feel nurturing and loving? And do something with those. They'll take you far. <sighs> yeah, it's really um, a relief to see this kind of reading because it's, it's, I think it's a journey for everybody. It certainly has been a journey for me. It's an ongoing journey for me. And I try and improve as I go along. So, and I have setbacks like everybody, but then I try and get back on the horse and say, do you know what? This is what I've been given. I'm going to try and make the best of it. And that's why I don't have a lot of sympathy for people who say, oh, do you know what? I'm 30 years old and the best years are behind me. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, well, some of us never had our best years, so we're still tri striving to get them, okay? So calm down. <laughs> or don't be so spoiled. Anyway. Have a wonderful day. If you would like a um, personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. On the front page, it says book your reading. Click on that button if you want to um, order a personal reading with me. I use the tarot, astrology, and numerology in my readings. The astrology chart I draw by using your place of birth, date of birth, and time of birth. And that really can answer any questions that you may have about you, what's coming up in future, um, when the best time is to travel, what the themes are coming up in your life and how to use those effectively. So if you do have any questions, please get in touch with me for a personal reading. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and share the video online. Have a wonderful day and I'll speak to you tomorrow.